let's use vPython uh, as a drawing tool. Okay, so sometimes it's easier to model things in some way rather than drawing. What am I doing with this thing? Why I keep swinging this around? What are you doing? Well, I have a physics test and I want to put this problem of a horizontal swinging string, oh, well, almost myself, on the test. Now, you could just sketch it. You could not even put the picture, right? But I like to have a picture. And so, you know, at, at one level, you'd say, I want a picture like this. I want to show that there is a ball and it's moving around in a horizontal circle. But that of itself, it, it's not super clear. You know, so maybe, okay, well, I'm gonna do this. So there, it's moving around a circle. I, I'd rather just make it as a 3D object and then pick the angle that I want. So I'm gonna show you how to make a 3D object in vPython that would look like this. And then you can just copy that and paste it into your test um, and use the power of vPython, web vPython. Uh, once you get the hang of it, especially for 3D objects, I mean, it's, it's super nice. There are better drawing tools, I'm sure, but the one that is the most useful is the one that you know how to use. Let's get started. Okay, so I wanna make this, and really I have three objects I wanna think about. I'm gonna have a top point up here, I'm gonna have a ball, and then I'm gonna have the string. Sphere, sphere, cylinder. And then what I want to do is to rotate that around and leave a trail, and then I'll be done. Okay, so let's just get started switching over here to uh, Web v Python, not that one, this one right here. Okay. Um, so let's just draw, uh, let's just start drawing stuff. I don't really need any units or anything here because uh, I'm not calculating anything, I'm just drawing. So I'm, everything's gonna have a length of, on the order of one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to put that top point there. Uh, so I'm gonna call it top, I don't even need the name. It's a sphere. Now, I'm gonna put it up a little bit. If I put it at the origin, then my thing will be hanging down below. So I'm gonna move it up half of the length. So the position is gonna be the vector zero, uh, 0 0.5, zero, and now the radius, this one's kind of tough, you kind of have to guess. I'm gonna say 0 0.01 and let's just run it. It won't look like anything, but at least it'll run. There, there's my top. Okay, now uh, I need my, uh, I need to pick the angle that I want that thing to rotate around. I want it to be big, so I'm gonna pick theta is equal to 52 degrees, just for fun, 52, times pi divided by 180, I'm gonna convert that to radians. And let's just call L is equal to one just for fun. That's the length of my string. Now I'm gonna have my ball. I'm gonna put my ball down there. So ball is a sphere. And its position is gonna be equal to the top position plus this go down and over with that length and angle. So the, it's gonna be plus the vector uh, L times sine of theta uh, and then negative L times cosine theta. Yes, there is pounding going on. They're doing construction. Sorry about that. But you can hear fine, right? It doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's my position. And then let's give it a radius that's a little bit bigger of 0 0.04. I don't know. And then color equals color dot red. And make trail equals true. Okay, let's run that. So there's my top, there's my ball. Now I'm gonna add the string. So the string, I'm gonna use a cylinder for the string. So string equals cylinder. P now, so the cylinder object, you need uh, three properties. Where it starts, the vector from where it starts to the end and the radius. So the, where it starts is the position. I'm gonna put the position at top.pos. And then the axis is the vector from where it starts to where it ends up. And that's gonna be equal to ball.pos minus top.pos, right? That's from the vector from the top to the ball. And then the radius, I want it thinner than my ball. So let's say a radius 0 0.01. I'm gonna leave it the, the default color. There's my string, There's my, so my, my top's not really visible. Let's just make that uh, bigger. So you gotta play around with these things, right? We're just, we're just playing around. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, now what I want to do is to make the ball move around in a circle. Now, there's a lot of options that you could do here. You could actually calculate the forces and model the forces and make it move, but I'm going to use the Python rotate function. So the rotate function, uh, you need to give it uh, a point about what you want to rotate, an axis about what you want to rotate, and an angle that you want to rotate about. Okay, so let's do that. 
Um, I'm going to do, I want to do it in steps so that I can leave a trail, right? I don't want to just rotate it. So I want to rotate it a tiny amount. How big? Well, let's just pick. I'm going to pick uh, d theta. D, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take d theta 0 0.01. I don't know. We can change that later. And that's how much I'm going to rotate it by. Um, I'm also going to have, oh, I have that theta up there. Let's say, uh, let's say d alpha. And then I'll call this alpha equals zero. Cause, and I'm using that so I can keep track of going all the way around once. So what I'm going to do now is just say while alpha is less than 2 times pi. So that's going to go all the way around a circle. And I don't know if you need a rate statement. If you don't put a rate statement, sometimes the trail doesn't show up right. So I'm just going to make it, I'm going to make it animated. We're not going to use the animation, okay? But that's just because sometimes the trail doesn't show up if you don't do that. So now what I'm going to do, before I forget, alpha equals alpha plus d alpha. So this is going to end the loop, right? So every time I, I go through this loop, it's going to incre increment my value of alpha until I get all the way around. If you don't do that, infinite loop. Infinite loops might be cool for if your name is a company called Apple, but it's not cool if you're writing a program. So now what I'm going to do is to rotate. I'm just going to rotate the ball. Okay, and then we'll go back and rotate the string. We need to rotate both of them. So here's how we rotate the ball. This is awesome. Ball dot rotate. That's it. Now I just need to give it the origin, the axis, and the angle. So the origin it doesn't really matter, or a gen, as long as it's on that. Uh, I'm going to rotate about this y axis. So as long as my origin's on the y axis, this will work. Uh, so let's just put the vector 0, 0, 0. It's not rotating about the axis, the vector 0, 0, 0, right? But it doesn't. Actually, now I'm not sure. Let's just try it. If we need to move that, we will. Um, axis is going to be equal to the vector. It doesn't really matter what value this is, just the direction. So I want it in the y direction. That's my axis of rotation. And then my angle is going to be equal to d alpha. That's how much I'm going to rotate about that a little bit. Change alpha. Let's just see what happens. I'm curious now to see what happens. OK. So that worked. Complete circle, right? Went all the way around. Now, I don't want a red line. I want red dots. So let's go up here to string, no, the ball. Let's just push, return here. And I'm going to add in uh, trail type equals points. So if you can't remember what that is, if you go to WebVPython and click, there's a make trail uh, description, you can, you can do that. Okay, so it is points, but they're really close together. Okay, so you can see those points. Uh, how can I fix that? Well, the easiest way is just to make this bigger, right? Because I'm actually, I don't need, it's not a numerical calculation. I'm not going to make an error if I have my d, d alpha too big. Uh, but I'm just going to take bigger steps. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. But this is not going to go in my test. Oh, I, one, I didn't. Actually, I could just leave it like that. Uh, I could leave it like that since it got back to where it started. I didn't even move the string. But let's move the string anyway. Okay. So let's rotate the string just in case maybe you want to make an animation also. So string.rotate, it's going to be the same thing. Rotate the same way. You could combine the string and the ball as one object, but you don't have to. There you go. And it's in 3D, so you can rotate around. Now, you don't want to use this because it's black background. And if you put that in your test and then you print it out, it's going to be a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is my favorite trick up here. Canvas back, oops, background equals color dot white. And now I'm going to run it. There you go. There is my 
uh, image. Now I can do a screen capture of that. I can put it in my Word document. I can put it in my Google Docs document. I can put it into Keynote. I could do whatever you want. And you know, if you want to add like equations on here, like L and stuff like that, I would do that afterwards. I'm really just concerned about the 3D aspect. And so there you go. It looks really great, doesn't it? You can put whatever you could do like that if you wanted to. You know, you could do uh, like that, uh, like that, like that, whatever, whatever you want. It's nice. So there you go. WebVPython for drawing. I hope you found that useful. Uh, I forget how to do these sometimes, some these things sometimes. So partly this is for me and partly this is for you. This is for us. I'll talk to you later.